Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where here we think creating is as close to magic as we're ever going to get. And speaking of magic, you know that we like pop culture and magical projects on this channel. And Danny over at the Wizardry Workshop just released one of his latest Harry Potter DIYs. Now, he did a fabulous job with the tools. He did a fabulous job with the pouch. But he freely states in there that sewing is not his thing. And he says that there are plenty of tutorials over on YouTube to find out how to sew the pouch. And we are hoping <laughs> to be that tutorial for you. So if you want to learn how to make a Snape Occlumency kit pouch, please continue watching. We will see you over in the sewing room. To begin with, I picked up some faux leather at Walmart. You can pick up any faux leather that you like. And then I got the exact same tools that Danny got. The only difference is, is I'm too cheap to pay $15 for plastic tubes. So this comes in a dollar pack at the Dollar Tree. They are glass though, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you are handling them correctly. But these are what I'm gonna use for the vials instead. Now, I am not going over how, what he did for the tools. You are going to need to look at his tutorial for that. All we are doing is talking about how we're going to improve the roll pouch. We are going to take you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you could approach your roll pouch if you want to complete the same step and want a little more instructions. Okay, there are many ways that you can approach this bag and you've seen it done with a paper template, which is absolutely fine, but I want to adjust based on the amount of fabric that I have. So I'm going to take the largest tool that we have and I'm going to measure based off of this. So for example, if you want a wand to fit in your pouch, you're gonna put a wand here instead. I've also determined that I want a two inch fold over on the bottom. So this is where our pocket is going to be. So it will fit in just like this. Once I have determined that, all I need to do is figure out the rest of my seam allowance. So if I cut it right here, and I'll bring this back down so we can see real, real numbers. If I cut it at 10, I don't have enough. That means I won't have a seam on this side. Now, I could cut it at 11, but I want a larger seam allowance because I want it to be able to fold and work with better. Since this is a thicker fabric, I want a larger seam allowance. So instead of cutting it at 11, I'm actually gonna come in and cut it at 12. And there isn't paper that is big enough for that. So I just wanted to show how you can work through the steps of making your fabric work for you if you fit any larger tools inside your pouch. So we have determined that our final cut measurement is going to be, I'm still cutting it 17 inches wide because I thought that looked awesome, but I am now cutting it 12 inches tall instead of 11 because that works better for what I would like. Okay, hey, we are going to talk about the faux leather that we purchased for this project. There are several things you need to know about it and they are, the first one is don't be afraid of it. It will have folds in this. We don't want folds in it. So what we're going to do is we are going to iron it. Don't leave me, don't freak out. You can iron it, you just have to be careful. Got it set on the wool setting. This is not wool, but it's hot enough, but not too hot. And I am gonna have them steam in it. Put it on the wrong side, get a press cloth. And we are just very lightly going to press. And can you see how that's gonna come out? go a little bit more because we want that to just not be there at all. And the reason I keep moving it is I don't want any iron marks. Sometimes if you go like this, this is not on the leather, this is on my, you will get the mark of an ironing board if, even if you leave it there for a minute. So if you've got something you're worried about, keep that iron moving. Okay, so we're we coming along. You can see it's much lighter. We're just gonna keep doing that. We're gonna go a little bit, go slow. That's the only thing I say is on your leather, go slow. So we're just gonna repeat that a little bit more. And repeat that we did. The other thing that happened during this time frame was us testing the fabric. We increased the heat to see if that would get rid of the fold and we increased it more and increased it more. And it was not 
melting or burning like we were worried about. So that's one of the number one things when you're testing new fabric is, as she said, start slow and build up to it. But the good news is, is even from seeing that, mm -hmm. you saw how much steam and how much weight she applied. And this actually still, I mean, it got really, really hot, but this still looks really, really good. The key is you've got to have a good pressing cloth. This is not cheesecloth. This is a nylon, I don't know if it's nylon or polyester, but you've got to have a nice, good press cloth. Um, if you use just a piece of cotton, which people do all the time, it's not going to be thick enough because you need the holes in it, but you don't, you want it to really protect your fabric. But there's a good reason why you should not be scared to iron this piece as long as you have a good press cloth. Yep. And then just keep an eye on it. Okay, let's see how we did. As you can tell, you can see it just a little bit, but that little one is, we got it out. It's better, because look where it was. Let's go back and show you where it was. See, it is better substantially. You can see right where the ironing stops and starts. This also, full disclosure, this was the end of the bolt. So I actually, like, even when I peeled this off of it, like, it made that, like, sticky plastic sound. So you also probably won't have folds this extensive if you get it further. Now, we did not end up getting the fold out of this because it was the end of the bolt. However, I just determined that I'm going to use that for the fold of the bottom of our pouch. Now let's get cutting. Once you have lined this up to 17, we're gonna take a rotary cutter and we're just gonna come like this so that we can get the straightest lines possible. Ta-da! Okay, so we have our 17 inches. So now we are going to cut this. We're gonna do this. So I'm gonna to learn to do a rotary cutter right here in front of all you people. We make it square and we're gonna go our 12 inches. Can she do this? Yes, <gasps> she can! Yes, she can! It's amazing! Okay, so. Learning the tools is half the battle. Okay, so this is the outer shell. Now, we have decided that because this isn't as black as Danny's was, we want it to be. So we are going to use two pieces. So what she means is we're creating a lining. We're creating a lining. That is exactly what we're going to do. So this is a new step. We are cutting a smaller square out of this piece to fit inside the outer portion. In order to make the lining for our piece, we don't want the bulk to be in the seams right here. So we are gonna trim down the sides of this piece so that it will just fit inside but not add any bulk. So that means we're gonna take two inches off the bottom so that this can fold up very, very easily. And then we're gonna take half an inch off the sides because that's the seam allowance that we are gonna follow. I need this piece to be 12 inches wide before I take off the two inches at the bottom. This piece is also not square. So as you can see, there's a part over here. I wanna make sure that I can get my seam allowances as accurate as possible. So I'm just squaring up this side and making sure that it is even on every side, which again is a lot easier to do with a rotary blade. I heard that. Now, I'm just checking our measurements. We have a 17 inch square by a 12 inch square and it is sized up. So since this is my lining, again, I wanna take at least two inches off the bottom and a half an inch on each side. So that's what I'm measuring up right now. Just to make doubly sure that I catch this, I'm gonna take a little bit less than a half of an inch. But as long as you follow the exact same measurement every time, because that's what that's the line I'll be following, as long as you follow the measurement at the same time, it's fine. Ta-da! 
taking that much scares me, Cheryl. Because <laughs> then my seam allowance has got to be real big. <laughs> no fear. Lots of, lots of fear. <laughs> When I first met Cheryl, I couldn't do a half inch seam allowance, so. This is true. But look at her go now, my goodness. And if you took the same amount off, your remnants should be the exact same size. Hey, guess what? I just talked about how I was scared to take off half an inch, but um, if you actually fold your seam allowances at half an inch, yeah, you do have to take the full half inch off. So if you're like me and your lining is too large, this is an easy fix. I'm just going to trim off this part and then your lining should fit right inside your seam allowances, as you can see here. See, once that's trimmed off, you can see that this fits on the fold and it feels so pretty. You're not adding any of that extra bulk to what will be our seams right here. So meanwhile, over at the ironing board, I have been pressing away and you can't hear Ashley say, but she's going to ask momentarily, how did you get such straight half inch little creases to go all the way around this? I'm realizing that I have not taught you this. I failed you. These boards are amazing because if you set this right there, that line right there is a half an inch. There's the edge of the board, there's a quarter, there's a half, put it up where I wanted, thought it was due, and then I just rolled it down to where it was a half an inch. And then I came out to the edge, finger press that down, and there's my seam. Now, we're gonna do the same thing on this end at two inches. So we're going to go to the side that has the full two inches. I'm gonna put it right here, we're gonna fold this up, to be right at the two inch line. And we're gonna push that up there. I'm gonna make our little finger press right there. Hold it out on the sides. I'm gonna take that out. And there is our two inch. And then we're gonna go over to the ironing board and just press that and that will be our two inch mark for the top. That is the easiest way I've ever found out. You can go along with your seam gauge and do all that but this makes a really nice and you can see I've got a little bit of a crease right there so I know where to do where to crease it off with the iron. Okay to do these mitered corners we just realized it's really hard to see black on black so I'm going to take some tailor's chalk and just mark the fold line so you can see that half inch. And remember we didn't mark the bottom because that is where our pouch is coming up and we do not have a seam on that side. That is right. So you can see that's the, the little box that we were talking about. We've marked that. That's going to be our mitered corner. So that's how we've got that marked. Now to do the mitered corner, fold this along that line so you've got those together right at the point. And how you do a mitered corner is you take that line. There's your line right there. And you're going to go 90 degrees this way, bam, but I can see on the squares, we've got two squares there, we've got two squares there, there's our little mountain. And we're gonna sew right along there, and then we're gonna trim that off, turn it to the inside, and that will be our mitered corner. So first we're gonna mark all of the mitered corners before we go over to the sewing machine. Exactly, so now we're gonna mark this other one. We've got the square, there's our little square, fold it along the diagonal, those edges together. This is the most important part. Just get those edges together. And what this eliminates is this eliminates bulk in the corner. So you can fold the seams under. That's not a problem. It just means it's more material for your sewing machine to go through. And it also is, it's really thick around the corners. So this is just a way for us to finish the seams with less bulk just with less bulk. Now, I know I always joke around and Ashley gets cross with me, but the main reason we're doing this is because I love mitered corners. There's our little mountain again. And I just couldn't resist doing them on this because they are, everybody's scared of them and they are so easy. Once you understand, you're just making that little mountain. So I just, so now we're gonna go sew them. 
You marked all four? There's only two. Because oh, the bottom yeah. is the head. <laughs> See, only this do. is why we're partners, guys. Okay, you can always tell if you've done the mitered corner right before you trim it is if you have two little ears sticking out there. Look like doggy ears or bunny ears or whatever kind of ears you want to be. But if you've got those two little ears sticking out, you've done your mitered corner right and you will eliminate the possibility of cutting it and finding out it's wrong. So, we've made our little mountain. We're going to trim that off. Bam! A little mountain over here. Trim that off. Bam. And turn it to the right side. Turn it to the right side. And we are going to lay that down. And look at what we have. We have a delightful mitered corner that we are now going to go press flat. Okay. Now we've got the mitered corner sewn, trimmed down, pressed. This is how it looks. Now we're going to slide our lining in here. This is also after we trimmed this back down, so. Yep, it's all trimmed down, all fits. Math doesn't have to be perfect, you just have to cut it where it fits. Make it work. You can use straight pins. I don't have any straight pins right here, so, but you could. I'm gonna use these little clips. This is an invention that Ashley taught me, and I started using these kicking and screaming because I thought, use pins. But you know what? They are kind of cool, I have to admit. Not anywhere near a necessity, but the one thing these will, these are easy to remove, uh, the, this or straight pins. You may be thinking, this is no longer two inches. You're absolutely right. I didn't want it matching up because it does help a little bit with the bulk. However, I do want a little bit of this overlapping on the bottom because some of the instruments that you are putting in here are quite pointed and this will help give it a little bit more stability if they happen to reach the bottom. So we are going to leave the bottom trimmed just the way it is. However, before we sew these seams, which we are still going to have the wonder clips on, we have two additional pieces. We need our strap for the middle and we are also sewing in our ties. For the band portion, we are back to some math. My vials are not as long as his, and I do want to make sure that some of mine are showing. So I am determining my width based on the shortest object that I'm putting inside my pouch. Therefore, I'm just gonna cut this at one and a half inches, and I folded it in half to make sure I get the longest piece possible. And I will actually cut it at the half this time, yep. Because this doesn't fray, this is not gonna have any additional seam allowances or folding it or anything. This will be the width of our strap. So that's why I'm just making sure at one and a half inches, you will still see pieces of it. We had the idea of once all the tools are in here and it's rolled up, that we would want a tie that's gonna hold it together. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the pieces that we cut off the lining to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is make these the same size. And you definitely could cut another strip, that's fine, but we're just using the extras that we already had, because why not? And for your comic relief, I'm going to attempt to do this with a rotary cutter. We don't want this showing. So we've cut the tie, we're going to take this piece and show you the trickiest way ever to make the little tie. We're gonna fold one end over a little past middle. I'm gonna fold the other end over like this. And then we are going to sew right down the middle of that. And that is going to be our tie. Now this method can be used for lacing up a bridal gown, any tie, apron ties, anything because I don't like to do the whole turn it inside out. That takes too much time. I'm gonna step over to the machine and sew this and then these will be ready to go. Okay, I've got it folded over, fold it over. I'm going to do, I like to sew in the middle. So I'm gonna put a little bit longer stitch just because it really, it's not supporting anything. It's just keeping it together. And leather has a tendency to stick. 
So I'm going to pull it through a little bit. Did you lengthen your stitch? I did. To a four, but it doesn't. I did. Oh. Just a straight stitch. She lengthened to a four. Now, did you lengthen it because of the thickness? I lengthened it because I didn't want to poke that many holes in the leather. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I have seen other sewers use a walking foot for uneven or thicker fabrics. That if you don't have a walking foot, do you have to change your needle? Do you have to change the presser foot? I didn't on any of that because there's not that many layers. It's not that thick, really. This is not that much thicker than a couple of pieces of cotton with interfacing. Had it been thicker, yes, I would loosen the pressure on the pressure foot. I would probably go to a bigger needle, but on this one, I did not. You can also see another difference is, yes, she starts it a little back. She starts it back here and she is also pulling hers through. So you want to make sure you're not pulling it to where the needle bends, but don't be intimidated if you don't have a walking foot. This is still doable with a standard presser foot. And we are going to just trim these ends diagonally like that, that. Just cut them like that. Okay, so as you can see, we did a little bar tack on the bottom of these just to make sure that's gonna stay nice and secure. Now, we had originally thought we would hide it inside that seam right there, but then we decided that's not a great idea because it's a lot of thicknesses, plus they're gonna have to bend over that way to wrap around. So we're gonna put it on the outside and we're just going to tack it right there. However, Ashley, my star student, decided that it would be better to sew this on before you put the lining on because then it won't show on the inside. She's a genius. So we're gonna sew it right there. We're not gonna cut this, we're leaving that out. I'm gonna sew it right like that. Okay. And the whole reason that we've decided that we want to attach one, you can just tie one around. Absolutely. But the reason we want to attach it is because I'm going to get really honest, I'll lose it <laughs> and I want it to stay usable. So I want a, an attached tie and that's still very fitting to the time period and the prop that we are recreating. Exactly. Now you may ask, why am I staggering those a little bit? It is strictly for function. If these were together, it's fine, but this way it's much easier to grab them and tie them around if they're not exactly on top of each other. Leather has a tendency to stick, even faux leather, but if there's just a little bit of separation, I've made a gajillion of these, it's gonna be easier to just pick them up if they're not right on top of each other. And you should have heard the sound this made coming off the bolt. Oh boy, does this stick to each it other. It does itself. stick, it does stick. Okay, so we've just sewn that along two places like that trim those edges and we are ready for Ashley to measure the inside for all of the magical tools. Now we are ready to start figuring out where we are going to put our middle strip. Now you still want to make sure that your longest item fits in but you also want to make sure that your shorter items fit in or because for the final look I want a little bit of the bottle to be showing, but I also want all of the tops to be showing. So when I tuck this in, I don't want the strap to fall on the metal like this. I want the tops to be showing, especially if you do all of the aging work, it looks really, really cool. So to line this up, you wanna make sure that your pocket is folded up. I just put these clips here to make sure that I will know how this will lay. So. I don't want to figure out the math exactly. I'm sure there is someone smart enough to do that, but I'm just going to lay out my arrangement, how I want it to look in the case, and then I will sew these on individually. And you are going to have to sew these in one at a time. This is not elastic, which means you have to get these pretty tight for them not to move. So you're going to sew a line, you're going to put your tool in, and then you're going to sew another line down. So this is going to be a lot of finger measuring, but you do want to make sure that it's tight enough for it to fit, but not so, and not so loose that all of them are wiggling around. 
once I have all of the pieces tacked in, that's when I will be able to cut this down and tack that inside this seam. And before we start sewing, yes, you can use a regular presser foot. You don't have to change anything. But this little quarter inch foot is like the greatest thing that has ever come out of 2021 this year. So I'm going to be using this foot in order to get a closer allowance and get closer to the measurements that I would actually like. And you wanna make sure that the bottom of your tape line matches the top of your middle strip. And that way, as you're sewing, you can just go along. And one last step, once you have your layout and where you want to place your strip, you are going to want to mark a straight line across it. Because this is faux leather, I'm putting a tape line across because I can just take it off right after. First stitch, I'm going to anchor this down so that I have something to keep it in place when I measure the tools. I have not worked with faux leather, so oh boy, is this a different feel. And this will be tacked in twice, so I just wanna make sure that it's anchored in right now. Since I am now hitting multiple thicknesses, I'm actually just going to reduce the speed so that it puts more power into the presser foot. But if you are not using a walking foot, you are definitely going to have to pull this through. So here we go. Ashley had a genius idea. I, like I said, I'm not the tech person, but she said, let's lay it out and take a picture. So we took a picture of how we want it to lay. And now we can follow that picture and get them in the same order. I thought that was very clever. I'm sure all you young kids know that, but I did not think of that. And now to go across, I can put the power back up so the machine will sew faster. But this is only two thicknesses. So parts of this are going to lay flat. The key to this is going to be measuring enough that this will stick in here. So, so I need a line that pretty much goes right here. So in the oh so accurate way, I'm gonna take this out and sew it just like that. I'm putting the hole right where my index finger was. And the other reason that I'm showing you this way is again, your tools may be a completely different width. So this is how I'm doing the measuring. <laughs> Here's our test. I won't lie, this one's a little tight, but it will still go in and out. And I would rather have it be on the tighter side than it running around. So I'm gonna do about a finger width apart and do my next straight line. So this is gonna take more of that strap, which is why we are individually measuring them. And this one, I particularly since this is glass, I actually do want this to be fairly tight because I'm hoping that will help with the lack of breakage. And I am keeping my finger right where I need the hole <clears throat> of the presser foot to be. And hopefully by now you can see how valuable that piece of tape is yep. going straight. Because let me tell you how much I already would have messed it up by now. Moment of truth. Please fit, please fit. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie, that is very satisfying. Mm -hmm. So now I have to fit all of the rest of these tools in. But I'm just gonna do the same technique. I like that spacing, so I'm gonna leave about a finger width apart. Then I'm gonna sew a line down, measure the item, sew there until I'm all the way across the pouch. Once you have all of the tools and spaces that you want, now there's no more math required. I'm going to clip this right here and I will tuck this under when we sew around. I will tuck this under here and it will all be enclosed in the outside seam. And speaking of enclosing the seam, that is literally the last thing we have to do. 
So for this step, since I wasn't worried about getting as close to the item as possible, we actually switched out to a roller foot to help with the leather going through the sewing machine instead of sticking. I noticed that it helped a little bit, but the walking foot may have been the best way to go. But again, if you don't have one, still doable. Just make sure to turn down the pressure on your presser foot, pull the item through, and go slow. After this, all the measuring has been done for you. I did do a top stitch line across the bottom of the pocket to make sure that the inside wasn't just flapping around. Then I enclosed all of the seams and we are ready for our final results. So there you have it, our adaptation of the Occlumency kit that Danny did. And kudos to you, Sir Danny. You did an awesome job of making that kit. I was incredibly impressed. This is her first time seeing the Wizardry Workshop. I've been following him. So I love Danny, but it's hard to make a project when it's not like your thing. And there were a lot more technical details that I ran into than I expected when recreating one myself. So seriously, Danny, well done. Thank you for tackling the project and giving us something to go off of. And thank you to his patron for the idea as well. Well done, well done, sir. And what, another thing that I like about this is even if you don't want your own Occlumency kit, uh, you can actually adapt this to anything that you want so you know pencils crochet needles anything like that but the bonus that i like about mine is um he had to give his away yeah this is mine this is staying with me i'm very excited if you found this tutorial useful please comment down below and share with anyone else who wants to make their own roll pouch or occlumency kit and if you you like what you see we do a lot of, to, of crafting tutorials and uh, pop culture content. So please subscribe to become part of our creator family. And that is all of the requirements for the YouTube algorithm growth. And so we will see you in our next video. Have a nice week.